So an issue that um, I've experienced, an issue that I've noticed within the social sciences and, and humanities research disciplines, which I come from, is the separation of digital applications from ordinary or traditional methods, even though pretty much everyone works using a computer in some way or another. Uh, many researchers want to learn Python or do intensive things or make use of their computational resources more effectively. Um, and the value of, of doing this is uh, very, um, is very evident. Um, but people tend to see these outcomes as, uh, as sitting atop a huge mountain, which, uh, and, and there's a, a very big intimidation factor or bewilderment of the enormity of it all, of going to reach that you know, uh, 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 of, of be, being proficient in such things. Um, many workshops tend to, uh, like I've, I've tried holding a workshop myself, but you know, workshops are often done to uh, try to teach various digital skill sets. Um, and this often has the effect of overwhelming participants um, with way too much information in way too little amount of time. And um, in my experience, uh, uh, as a participant and as someone who has tried to give a, a good workshop, which didn't, wasn't very good, in my experience <laughs> specifically, it was very difficult to connect with the learners in a way that actually affects change in people's day-to-day -day practices. Um, so again, drawing from my own very limited experience, um, I see um, that um, the people who are more proficient using um, digital tool sets in social, science, social sciences and humanities uh, uh, tend to uh, have greater continuous support from peers or mentors. Um, and so this you know, comes down to the, the, the fact that it's uh, challenging when it's challenging to learn a thing when there is uh, no one else around you uh, to share your successes and failures and who understands the challenges that you're facing. Um, so I don't really have a solution for this and this is partially why I'm giving this lightning talk. Um, but um, I'm thinking about creating, like, I think maybe perhaps creation of, you know, low stakes venues where you could, like, play around, come up with so simple solutions or outcomes um, that's not necessarily separated from physical, or for, 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 sorry, from, from typical workflows in the ways that makerspaces tend to be, at least from the perspectives of social scientists and humanities, which tend to distinguish themselves institutionally from such spaces. Um, so, in other words, um, thinking about ways, and I, I haven't actually done this, and I'm, I'm wondering, I'm thinking about ways of developing localized skill sharing support groups, and I want to like maybe have, give, have this opportunity um, to, uh, to uh, um, ha ask you guys what suggestions or practical solutions you might think of, or you already do to foster that kind of uh, that kind of local, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, go. No, I, that's pretty much it, so yeah, I'd like to hear more from you guys. Um, I also work in academia, yeah. so I, I feel your pain, and I recognize it, and the one thing that I found a lot of uh, support in is a community called uh, software carpentry is also known as, uh, there's also, I, I don't know, are you familiar with it? Yeah, I actually did a training thing with them, and I haven't actually led any through them, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things that software carpentry and data carpentry do, peer-reviewed lesson plans, oh. is very steeped in um, adult pedagogy, so it's trying to, like, what is the quickest way to uh, find something that's very useful, and then... Uh, and also in an also very strong sort of code of ethics, code of conduct, very grounded in understanding where a lot of places where tech fails. Mm -hmm. I think um, I recently had the pleasure of, I was also, I also got training and I got to do my first session, which was with uh, a group of government of Canada agricultural scientists teaching them R. So having them to go from uh, exposing them to a, a possibility of leaving Excel and trying something new. Um, Changing, investing in, in someone's tool set is very difficult. Um, finding that peer group is, I think, is key and instrumental, and uh, all the best to finding it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More questions or thoughts?
So, so I'm going to flip the question the other way. Um, so what do you think technologists should be doing to learn more about the techniques of the humanities? Um, that, that, yeah. That, that's a, a great question. I mean, I, I guess uh, a big part of this is, you know, making use of tools for particular purposes, right? Uh, the user isn't necessarily generic, so uh, thinking about how these things might be used in actual application and, you know, engaging in a conversation or connecting with the, with the specific needs of the user. I mean, I guess um, that's kind of what I was, my frustration with workshops is that they tend to be, or maybe not all, because I mean, I've, I've done work, carpentry's workshops and, you know, it's hard to connect with everyone, you know, and it's hard to connect with, there's always gonna be a, a, a cutoff, right? Um, so, you know, thinking about specific users and you know, be able to do like a, a, like a more discursive, discussion-oriented thing, I, like I, maybe that might be helpful and I'm, I'm just unsure about how to do that in a way that would be um, peer-based, you know, informal, but also, in, but also have some sort of legitimacy involved, you know, institutional legitimacy is what I meant to say, you know. Um, it's, I guess it maybe depend on the community, right? Uh, it's, huh. I would say that um, the opposite problem is also something worth discussing, like you come from the social uh, uh, sciences and humanities and uh, you express your agony towards how to get these digital skills, but also the people who design digital tools really need to know how people will use them and uh, really need this input from humanities and social sciences. So there has to be some uh, kind of uh, uh, working together there. So, uh, yeah, I was wondering about your thoughts on that. Have you thought about yeah, the, the, the opposite yeah. side? Yeah, I mean, more collaboration is always better, I guess, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I, uh, I like to see more tools, like, made by or, or made with contributions from, like, social sciences, humanists, especially with the intent for their research purposes. I mean, like, if it's a, a workflow tool or whatever, like, some of my favorite tools are made by people who use them, you know, um, like qualitative coding software called QualCoder or like this note-taking thing called Zettler, you know, they're made by sociologists who, who do this sort of thing. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, it would, I, I, don't care, I don't really know what other thoughts I have at the moment, but I'd love to talk, like, I don't know right now, but yeah, I'd love to talk more about that. One more question. Hi, um, I'm from the US and I don't actually know what the situation is with the formal education here in Canada, but I wanna just mention what we're doing. Um, the National Science Foundation has been supporting our work for about four years um, in a project that we call Data Science for All. And specific to this issue that just came up, um, we're doing a we're running a workshop with high school um, about bringing data science into the computer science curriculum at the high school level, and that's exactly what the problem is. They've tried this, and the teachers and the students like just refuse to do it. It's like mm -hmm. they hated the data sets, they hated the projects, and what they need to be doing is a working in a participatory design process with the teachers to develop tools, just like the last uh, person mentioned that the teachers want to, will use that speak to their needs and B, the students need to be gathering the data themselves to answer questions that are yeah. meaningful to them. But so that's one thing. The other is I've gotten inspired over the last couple of days at this conference to, because really what we're more interested in is everybody else. It's particularly underserved communities and data literacy issues in those communities. Um, I've got this little germ of an idea of making a pop-up data literacy cart that I want to just yeah. sort of take around, right? I mean, this doesn't exactly speak to your no, it question, doesn't. you know, in the formal education realm, um, but I just wanted to bring up that issue as well and would love to talk to anybody else who's working with 
data literacy in underserved communities, that whole Yeah, issue. yeah. I totally, I totally agree with everything you're saying. Uh, I don't know, I, 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 I guess like taking down like the, the tokens of, of, of what it means to be like a, a digital, prof, digitally proficient person might help. Like um, maybe like, uh, like social scientists, maybe social scientists, maybe like the, are the, the stereotype of social scientists using non-digital tools is the people maybe buy into that personally, you know? Whereas we all actually use, you know, computers in our everyday lives. It's just, we, uh, it, so like this, I mean, maybe it's something that has to, like an image thing that has to change and having that presence probably has, you know, a, a local presence like through such like a, a cart or like, or, you know, like reinforcement through peer support, you know. I mean, I, I, I yeah, I guess I'm out of time, but yeah. Uh, I'd love to talk more about this with everyone who asked questions and otherwise. Let's give a round of applause to Zach.